Further discussion, Representative Frederick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill. To the bill. Colleagues, I don't care much for this bill, and I'm going to tell you why. First and foremost, I think it's a little Orwellian to have a board with quasi-governmental powers with investment in its name without seeming to have a mission or charge to promote meaningful investment in educational excellence. Now that would have to include a plan to increase resources. Secondly, and this should have been first, some of the most vehement proponents of this plan, vague as it is, have employed the language of force, threats, and coercion, which is not the language of education. Simon Legree was not an educator. You can look that one up too. Third, I have seen a lot of this before. 20 years ago, this building passed the Education Act for the 21st Century, another set of sweeping mandates that seemed to be based on good intentions and that used many of the same foils as props. Props, dropouts, poor children, children of color, at-risk kids. The need for alternative pathways as well as equal opportunity. In fact, the good parts of it fell victim to relentless budget cutting, and we saw our curriculum development resources diverted into compliance. For anyone working in the education field, it felt like a nefarious plot. Create conditions of extreme scarcity and stress that make it increasingly hard, if not impossible, to carry out the mission, and then you blame the educators for the ensuing shortcomings. My basic problem with this bill continues to be the lack of depth and the discussion of outcomes, which seems to be a concept central to the whole idea. What outcomes are we talking about? Specifically, I have to insist that test scores are not outcomes. What will members of the current generation of school children be doing when they reach their 20s and 30s? I'm not just talking about what they will do to earn a living, although that's important. I'm also talking about how they will participate as citizens. How will they raise their own children? How will they process the information bombarding them in order to make decisions in our democracy? Will they be literate enough in the skepticism and, uh, and the urge to, to verify what characterizes science to avoid manipulation by junk science and snake oil salesmen? Will they be literate enough in math to avoid manipulation by bogus statistics? Will they be literate enough in history to appreciate the lessons our society has already learned? Will they be able to follow a logical argument and will they be able to make one? Will they have the capacity to appreciate the many wonderful things created by human minds, hearts, and hands? Will the wisdom of the ages inform their lives? Now, these are some of the questions that trouble me. And that's how you plan for outcomes. And then, as I've said before, you do not actually plan or budget for outcomes unless you connect them to inputs. And no, so-called compacts are not inputs. This is about governance, not pedagogy. Folks, this strikes me as more dithering, more avoidance of the real issues. The system is grievously under-resourced. There is no magic that will change that. Even if the OEB plan could, see, could be seen as necessary for improving the system, by no stretch of the imagination is it sufficient. Is it the most important thing to do at this time? My problem is, I doubt it. Colleagues, this is not how the best education systems in the world operate, and our future deserves the best in the world, not serial, poorly planned experimentation. We can do better. But I've got to say, in the end, I will probably be a reluctant I vote because I'm ever the optimist. I hope to be able to influence how we proceed after the passage of this bill. Because again, I think, frankly, we can and we must do better. Thank you.